1942, in the dark days of the Second World War, the Japanese were poised to invade Australia. In the jungles of New Guinea, outnumbered and outgunned, Australian soldiers fought a series of pitched battles along the Kokoda Track. On Australia's very doorstep, these brave few inflicted bloody defeat on the once invincible Japanese army. But incredibly, when it was over, the military top brass branded our soldiers as cowards. That slur has never been forgotten. Only now, 60 years on, is the truth finally being told that this was indeed their finest hour. the untrammelled wilderness of Papua New Guinea's Owen Stanley Ranges. The battle Australian soldiers fought here more than half a century ago was everything that Gallipoli wasn't. At the time, it went unreported. Afterwards, its heroes were promptly forgotten. Yet, unlike Gallipoli, it was a great Australian victory some say our greatest, and it was, uniquely, a battle Australians fought alone and in defence of their own soil. They called them the ragged bloody heroes. They were outgunned, they were outtrained, they were outnumbered by six, maybe even ten to one. They were in some of the toughest terrain in the world, and yet they overcame all those odds and they triumphed. This month, there were celebrations where once there had been gunfire and death. Sixty years after it happened, finally a memorial was dedicated to those who were our last line of defence against Japanese invasion. You got the vision of your loved ones at home. You got the uh, fact that you're fighting on Australian soil, technically though it was. We were fighting for Australia and that makes a hell of a difference. You're fighting for something you believe in. You're fighting for people. But they say that truth is always the first casualty of war. And the terrible truth about this campaign is that when it was all over, the men who are now being lauded as heroes were spurned as cowards. It was a disgraceful slur which the Kokoda diggers would never forget nor forgive. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard the words come out. In the heart that we knew we'd done a good job. We'd lost a lot of mates, a lot of people had made sacrifices of their lives. It came as a huge shock. As commanding officer of the Victorian Ray's 2nd 14th Battalion, Colonel Phil Roden heard the Australian Army Commander, General Sir Thomas Blamey, tell his troops after Kokoda that they were cowards who had run from the enemy. Do you remember his words, his exact words? Well, the rabbits had run is the main that, one. That it's not the man with the gun who gets yes. shot, but the rabbits had run. Mm. What did he mean? Well, we were cowards, I suppose. The campaign the Australians waged at Kokoda was a tactical withdrawal against superior numbers, a guerrilla campaign perfectly suited to jungle conditions. But Blamey misinterpreted withdrawal as a retreat. It was an unbelievable, unacceptable situation that the commander didn't understand what was going on and could even, even think of talking to his troops in that way. Now, this really was the turning point. Journalist Patrick Lindsay has made it his mission to set the record straight. In his new book, The Spirit of Kokoda, Lindsay argues that those diggers were heroes and that they stand here at a place called Isurava, a place until now very few Australians had ever heard of, ended forever the Japanese plans for the invasion of Australia. This is our Alamo. Isurava's our Alamo. I mean, the odds here were unbelievable. They drew on a spirit, a special spirit, and they were able to use that spirit to overcome those odds and to survive and, and in the end, to defeat the invaders. At Ishirava, 500 Australians defied the advance of at least 4,000 Japanese troops. It was a time when the Japanese seemed invincible. 
these were Australia's darkest days. Following the rapid collapse of Singapore and the Philippines, now the Japanese had landed on the east coast of New Guinea, then technically Australian soil, and were pushing overland through the rugged Owen Stanley Ranges in the direction of Port Moresby, and beyond that, Australia. Did you ever have any doubts that you could hold the line? I didn't have the time to have doubts. We had so much to do. Never had time to entertain doubts. We didn't express them to each other. I mean, there was no confusion about what, what the diggers were doing here. They were fighting for themselves, their families, their mates, Australia. And these guys were the last line of defence between this Japanese onslaught and Australia. If they'd failed, who knows? The Kokoda Track traverses some of the most unspoiled rainforest in the world. And they used to call it laughing knees, because your knees just sort of tremor, they, they tremble underneath you eventually. Soldiers on both sides were afflicted by malaria, dysentery and tropical disease. They suffered starvation and exhaustion on this same track where even in peacetime, adventure yeah. tourists still consider it yeah, right. the toughest of going. Hard enough walking just for us now, but oh, exactly. they had what kind of weight? Well, they had probably, you know, 20 kilos at least on their back and then, and then their people, weapons. People shooting at them. And people, yeah, and, and the, the amazing thing was, if you, you can just get a, a bit of an inkling here, that the diggers would say that it never got more than a cricket pitch apart where really? they were fighting. And because you can, you yeah. know, 10, 15, 20 metres, you can't see anything. Go in there. and demonstrate. Yeah. It was here in thick jungle where the pitched battle of Isurava was fought in August 1942. In these conditions, a jungle quickly closes in. You're fast disappearing. Excluding all vision, and battles are fought even at close quarters between enemies who can scarcely see one another. So what have you found? Well, right here, here's a weapons pit. Even now, it's possible to stumble onto an old weapons pit only metres from the track. This area here is the site of the battle that saved Australia. It's sacred ground. Many young Australians never returned from here. Some are still buried here. We don't even know where some of them are still here. One who didn't make it back from Isurava was Butch Bissett, aged 32, fatally wounded in the stomach by Japanese machine gun fire. His younger brother Stan was serving in the same battalion. I'd heard that Butch had been wounded and the men were carrying him out. And so when I met the stretcher party back somewhere near the rest house area and I went with them, and we put him on the side of the track. Men with lesser wounds had some chance of survival thanks to the help of the so-called Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, Papua New Guinean tribesmen who carried the injured back to hospital at Port Moresby. But Butcher's injury was too serious for the rugged eight-day journey. He looked at me and I knew that you know, there was no hope for him. He'd got a burst of machine gun through his tummy. And, of course, on the Kokoda track, a stomach wound was a death sentence. Absolutely. And I just stayed with him for, the, for that six hours. I held his hand and we, at times, he was conscious and he was quite reasonable and we talked about, you know, some of our good times and our bad times. And, As kids? Yeah, we talked about mum and dad and... How long did you get to spend with your brother at the oh, end? Six hours, from ten till four. He died at four o'clock. I know, because it lived in my memory, I know. Butch died in Stan's arms. More than half a century later, Stan made the pilgrimage back to that jungle battle site and later to the graveside of his long dead brother. It, it brought back memories of the love that I had for him because we were, we were particularly close, we were four boys, but we were the two youngest and We'd be through many scraps, scraps together. <laughs> so, what else can I say? Stan well remembers the accusations of cowardice made by General Blamey. He was still mourning his brother Butch when Blamey called a parade to address the men who had just survived the hell of Isurava. In future, I expect no further retirements but advance at all cost. Remember, it's not the man with the gun that gets shot, 
It's the rabbit that's running away. I was really deeply shocked because I knew exactly what my brother had done, his platoon had done, or what we later did back along the track at each killing ground we established at, at, at Gifogi and Brigade Hill. I knew exactly what had happened in, in, in every, every, every stage. The claims of cowardice misunderstood the tactics of the Kokoda defence. The Australians were faced by an enemy outnumbering them 10 to 1. To fight conventionally would have been to invite annihilation. Australian tactical commanders, like Colonel Phil Roden, needed to wage a different kind of war. You hold him up, but you don't hold him up to the extent that you become embroiled on that spot. You move backwards again and cause him to more or less overbalance on spot A. You go back to spot B and the same thing develops all the whole way. At no time was he able to engage his superior numbers against you, was Correct. he? Correct. A group of 20, 30 or even 100 at a time Japanese, and they'd just rush straight forward to our positions. We were able to just mow them down at, on time. We, they'd, you could see them falling in heaps. And... Contrary to the claims of cowardice, some of the Australian defenders actually stayed on to fight, despite the fact that they'd been relieved by reinforcements. They were members of the 39th Battalion, mere teenagers known as chocolate soldiers because untrained and with no battle experience, they were expected to melt in the tropical sun. These, these were the chocos. And the, the chocolate soldiers? Yes, and they, they, they were very good friends of ours, real mates. So it doesn't make any difference to us, chocos or not. Cole Bloom was a private in the regular army. He and his mates would remain forever impressed by the resolve of the Chocos, those inexperienced boy soldiers who stayed on to fight. They could see that we were in trouble and they knew and quite a number of them came back and joined us and every rifle counted and every bullet counted. In recent years, historians have applauded the Australian tactics which eventually wore down the enemy reducing his numbers to the point where the Japanese had to do the unthinkable, retreat. It wasn't in their military lexicon. They didn't even have a word for it to do it, so they had to tell them to, to advance to the rear. Now, as a Japanese soldier used to winning and, and, and never having any doubts, that would have been a shattering moment. We were surprised when we heard that they were, didn't want to fight anymore and they were ordered to retire what was the expression? Advance to the rear. Advance to the rear. <laughs> Wonderful expression. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but um, we were surprised when that happened. At last, that victory and the heroes of Kokoda have been acknowledged and celebrated. They've now been lauded by political and military leaders in terms that should have been clearly stated a lifetime ago. In the most atrocious fighting conditions, Along this track, they turned around the course of World War II. History, if not changed, has been corrected. And an old and bitter debt has at last been settled. I think we're, we're all wonderfully pleased about it and wonderfully grateful that at last the government and many, many more Australians understand the true circumstances of what happened on that occasion and the sacrifice that was made by so many of our people, wonderful fellows, and they did and what a wonderful job that they did. And it's nice to think something's been done to recognise not only those that were killed, but those that are still here. And have some old ghosts been settled for you? Yeah, some of them have been settled. I'd, I'd say most of them have been settled, but, but I still feel that uh, I will be emotional, and yeah, it must be, it's uh, there's a lot of, lot of good fellows went up there.
Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.